What is up everybody? This is Famous. So today I'm doing something a little bit different uh, from what I normally do and that is a product review. And I want to tell you why I'm doing this product review. So myself, I, I was looking for a new camera, right? And what I do is I want to go research it. I want to see what people say about it and everything. And I heard it was a really good camera, had really high quality, everything like that. So I, you know, went ahead and bought the camera. Well, then later on, I ended up finding out that somehow my clips were recording in 720p, even though everything I was hearing was that it had 1080p, it was capable, it was this, it was that. So then I started freaking out. So, um, you know, I went to YouTube and looked up about 10 product reviews, 10, the top 10 in the search. And I, you know, started listening through it. You know, some of them were 10, 15 minutes long, something like that. And I started noticing that out of the 10, about seven of them said, you know, but it can actually record in 1080p. What's really going on is it can only take photos in 1080p. The highest setting that you can possibly do really is 720. So I'm freaking out thinking that I made a bad purchase when that's actually not the case. You, there's a couple settings that you have to include. So what I'm asking you guys to do is if you do enjoy this video, please like and, you know, and comment. I have to get the engagement up because other people just like me are going to freak out at some of the uh, the bad reviews. Without further ado, I'm going to get in and talk to you about everything that I think is important about the Sony HDR CX675. So here is the box that it comes in. This is the front. Uh, some of the main information that we can look at is actually going to be on the back. Now that we have it focused in, some of the main points that I wanted to point out that I personally think is great for this camera is that it has 32 gigabits of internal memory and then it has pretty decent microphone as well. And then if you look off to the bottom, it kind of gets into some of the, uh, you know, pictures of something. But for instance, full HD 1080, you can see that in the bottom left side of it in kind of the gold and black. So that kind of confirms that it is possible. Then there is this XAVCS, and that's this type of, uh, you know, file type, and then next to it is another file type too. The XAVCS is what you can record in 1080p, and I'm actually going to show you a little bit later on how to actually change it to that so you don't have to worry about that. It's also Wi-Fi capable, it has uh, HDMI capabilities. And that's just kind of like the software stuff, and then we can go ahead and open up the box, talk about what's inside it, and then we can get into the hardware and then also the software side of it as well. So there are two main cables that it comes with, and that is an H or a, I'm sorry, a USB extender, which is really cool because you can hook it up to the camera yourself and then plug it right into your computer or the wall fairly easy and then it also comes with an HDMI cable as well so looking at the hardware it's got a pretty good screen on it so one of my friends has actually been a cameraman for me recently and he noticed that the camera or the uh, the screen was a really good quality said it was much easier to tell what he was filming and if we go ahead and rotate over we'll see that right here is a power button Here's a play button, and then there's one here that's like a, a text-to-speech type deal. And then if we open it up, this first compartment, there is a microphone jack, an audio jack, and then a microphone jack. So you can plug in an external microphone into the top one, which is really cool. And then on the bottom, if we flip this down, this is where you can store an SD card and then also one called an M2. And then there's also the HDMI cable port. And that's where you would plug in the HDMI cable that comes with the camera. If we rotate around to the back, you can take a look at the battery. The battery seems to have a really good life, probably around two to two and a half hours. And then there is a start and stop record. And then there's also a bottom port down here, which is this old type of charger cable. I've seen it on my, uh, my old camera. But it did not come with a cord to do that, so I would recommend just using the USB. If we switch it around to the side, you'll notice that there is a, a handle that it's actually pretty sturdy. But something that is so cool about this camera is that there is a USB 
which this is what you would plug the extender into. You, then you can plug it into the computer or the wall, but it just slots right into the handle. So that is like, you know, super convenient, definitely a good thought. So now let's take a look at the front. So with the front, it's actually got a very cool feature that I really wanted to see somebody talk about, but no one talked about it. So this lens has the capability of stabilizing itself. So what it does is it will move on its own to kind of interact, you know, you tilting the camera up and down. So hopefully we can see it when I'm doing this, but you know, you'll see that it tries to stay centered, which personally I think is great because I shoot a lot of videos where I'll be walking or moving a lot and that truly helps out a lot with the stabilization. Now, if we take a look at the top of the camera, now this is something I'm going to help out a ton of people if you watch this. So it has what would be called a hot shoe. So this is the kicker though. This is not a universal sized hot shoe. This is actually, I think they call it an HMI or IMH or something like that. But it's something that Sony created on their own. So I personally went out and bought an external microphone and tried to plug it in and to no avail, it ended up not fitting. So this is the external microphone that I purchased, which is a Rode microphone. And I personally thought that, you know, I could basically just plug it in and go, you know, that would be all that I would have to do. Hey, you know, it has a shoe spot on the bottom and then all I have to do is plug it into the top of the camera. But that was not the case. And I found out the hard way. And unfortunately, I was pressed for time, so I got everything all at once and had to film the next day. So then I ended up finding out that you needed this piece. So this piece is designed as basically a converter to convert from the Sony's version of the hot shoe to a universal size for the hot shoe. And so as you'll notice, you can simply plug in the universal hot shoe in just like that. Technically, this is a cold shoe, but then you just tighten it down. And then the microphone is on there, real nice and sturdy. And then we can uh, plug it into the camera. And just like that, we are in. And then all we have to do is buckle it down to the camera itself. We want to make sure that it is nice and stabilized. And then once you've done that, it's on there nice and tight. This thing's not going anywhere. And if we rotate around to the screen side, I'm going to show you where you would plug this in. Although I pointed it out earlier, all you have to do is plug it into the red clip. You're going to see uh, at the bottom right side of the display screen, it's going to be picking up some information. And this type of microphone only picks it up from the front side. So it, it's very centralized, which helps for, you know, surrounding type swirling or coming from left and right, kind of that ambient noise gets removed with this type of microphone. Okay, so like I said, I wanted to talk a little bit about the software and particularly the interface. Now, the reason why I believe so many people don't think that you can record in 1080p and there ends up being a lot of issues is because the default setting and the default file type is not set to the one where you can actually do 1080p. And then there's also this random display setting that I think is a little deceiving. So if anyone is doing this for the first time, they may not know what's going on. Okay, so like I said, rather than just showing you the, the wrong way to do it, I figure it would probably be smarter to just do the quick way, so or the right way. So the first thing you need to do is click on image quality slash size. And then notice down at the bottom where it says file format. It says X A B C S H D. That is exactly what you want to have. But the default setting that it's set to is the AVCHD. And that can actually only record in 720p. But since that's the default, I think people just leave it there and they don't realize that, you know, there's a better setting that you can use for higher quality recording. So if we go ahead and we just make sure that we select the XAVC, which we have, and then click OK in the top corner. Go ahead and do that and it's going to say that it's executing and then it is completed. So check this out. This is why I believe that people, uh, you know, kind of struggled with it. So notice this. 
if you look up at the top side of the screen, notice that record mode is not, you know, a little brighter than the rest. The reason why three of them look bright are is because you can actually click on those options. So to me, when it shows record mode as an option that you can't click on, that would, you know, kind of mislead me to make me think that you can't actually record in this mode. You maybe can only take photos or, you know, just something like that. It just seems deceiving, but that's actually not true. So once you have it on the setting, the clips that you're going to record are going to be in 1080p. So I have an example of showing you what it was like in the original setting, and you can take a look at the file type and you can clearly see that it does in fact say 720p, but when we switch it over to the XAVCS format type or file type, you'll notice that it gets bumped up to 1080p and that's exactly what we want. So that concludes the product review of the Sony HDR CX 675. Hopefully I cleared up the air on some of the features, maybe some of the misleading. Personally, what I think happened was that it's not that people had bad intentions. They probably just made a review on the product literally right when they opened up the box and just didn't realize, you know, some of the things you needed to change or some of the optimal settings or anything like that. Personally, for myself, I believe you need to create a review after you've actually used the product, not just when you simply open it. So hopefully that helped you in deciding whether or not you wanted this camera, and hopefully it kind of cleared up the air a little bit. I really would appreciate if you liked this video so that I can try and get up higher in the search, just so people watch this video as opposed to other ones that kind of share false information. And if you did enjoy this content and would like to see more like it, be sure to subscribe as well.